drive on the same side as the road, they have a Greggs and an Asda. Oh my, how insulting. You're it no, you're in, I'm going to stop you right there. The political news we see is increasingly being determined by social media, and that's given rise to echo chambers, or filter bubbles. We've noticed some pronounced filter bubbles here in Scotland, where there are some big conversations going on. There's a tight-knit online community of Scottish nationalists, which consists of Twitter personalities, Facebook groups, and blogs. But are they, and others, in a political bubble? I'm visiting a unique pro-independence bar in Glasgow. It's so pro-independence that they actually changed their name to Yes Bar in the lead-up to the 2014 Scottish referendum on independence. Co-owner Suzanne is a pro-independence activist. She'll be voting for the Scottish National Party, but there are suggestions that there's a conservative resurgence in Scotland. Did it give you a bit of pause that you were turning away yeah, no customers. absolutely. I mean, I was terrified, but I have to say that within a week, I had tripled my turnover. Do you know many people who voted no? One. Are people who are not in favour of independence mm -hmm. welcome in here? Absolutely. You know, you don't come in and there's pictures of Alex Salmond and Nicola Sturgeon. It's a regular bar. You up for talking to a Tory politician? Absolutely. <laughs> Hugh Ewan Blockley. At 19 years old, he's Scotland's youngest councillor and he's more than willing to talk about conservative politics, even in Glasgow's number one pro-indie hangout. Suzanne, what's your opinion of unionists like you in here? You know, unionism is a perfectly valid political ideology. I've got absolutely no problem with personal people. You know, their opinion is totally valid. It's just not one I share. What do you think about the independence movement? Well, it's actually uh, very similar to um, what was said there. It just reversed. But the talk soon turns to the general election. You know what? We're not a family of nations. This is Theresa May in a Westminster-led government stamping her feet on top of Scotland and ignoring democracy. But in terms of the family of nations, what I would urge a lot of Scottish nationals to do is to leave the bubble, to go to England, to go to Wales, to go to Northern Ireland, and you'll find that they have the same problems as us. you find that they drive on the same side of the road, they have a Greggs and an Asda oh goodness, and a Morrison. Insulting. No, but, but... How what, insulting. You're making, no, you're in, I'm going to stop you right there. I want to explore a little bit about what's informing your own points of view and what you're thinking about and what you're seeing about this election. Disgusted to hear that Labour have formed a coalition with the Tories to run Aberdeen and are now here to run the North Lanarkshire Council just to keep the SNP out. It's a Scotland-wide story of Labour councillors getting verbally abused, red Tories out, stuff like that. There's someone holding a banner for a democracy. Yes, yeah, hang on. Hold a banner, that's not abuse. Suzanne and Ewan are seeing two completely different takes on the same story about a local Labour Conservative alliance keeping the SNP out of power. Eva Blander has been made Lord Provost of the City of Glasgow today. She's a feminist and an independent supporter, and she's the first SNP Lord Provost of Glasgow. Happy news. As a Glasgow City Councillor, I did, I did see it, and I'm incredibly happy that another woman has, has been given the position. Amazing. You saw it in real life? Yes, I saw it in real life. And she, but not on social media. This time, Suzanne is seeing chatter about the appointment of an SNP politician to a local government post. But Ewan doesn't see the story in his feed at all. We're basically getting two different views of the world yeah. through these devices yeah, that absolutely. we hold in our hands. We need to look at the reasons why. I mean, why people voted no and listen to them and what made them scared. It's important not to be in a bubble when it comes to these things because you do need to look out with your own comfort zone and that's what politics is about. Once you're in a filter bubble, it's tough to hear the other side. And so, no matter what happens on June the 8th, somebody here will be surprised by the general election result.